Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So we have one more week to go before E3 Volt releases on Magic Online. So starting with the next episode of Budget Magic, we will be hitting up some sweet budget standard decks for probably a few weeks in a row. Uh, but for this week, we're going to head to Modern one more time for a deck that I've been having a ton of fun with this week. This is Rakdos Agro. As you can see, 93 bucks in the paper world, 29 ticks on Magic Online. So a pretty sweet price for a deck that is surprisingly competitive. I've been really happy with how this deck turned out. So a quick reminder before we break down the deck, if you enjoy Budget Magic and you enjoy this Rakdos Aggro deck, it would be awesome of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Rakdos Aggro. So the basic idea of this deck is we are playing efficient creatures, efficient removal, and basically trying to kill our opponent before they get a chance to combo us off and kill us or kind of stabilize if they're playing a control deck. So Monastery Swift Spear and Vampire Lacerator are our one drops. Swift Spear is the better of the two. We do have quite a few spells in this deck, so it usually gets in for one on turn one since it has haste. And then throughout the rest of the game, we're usually getting in for two points of damage, sometimes more than that. Plus, because of prowess, Opponents are kind of hesitant to block a Monastery Swift Spear. It's just rarely safe to block it if we leave mana up because they never know when we could throw a lightning bolt to their face and just kind of blow them out in combat. Vampire Lacerator, just kind of a backup one drop. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2, so it's on curve. It does deal us a bit of damage, so it can be painful in aggro mirrors. But we can get our opponent under 10 life pretty quickly, so it's... I don't know, it's not a great card, but it's good enough, and we just needed additional things to do on turn one. Moving on to the two drops, this is where the deck gets really powerful. So Pack Rat is just an unfair magic card. Pack Rat's a card that can just win games on its own, and that is true in Modern just like it is in Limited. Of course, in Modern, there's more removal, so it's very possible that it just dies and eats a removal spell right away, but there will definitely be games that we just take over with Pack Rat. We just discard a card every turn, make more Pack Rats, they get bigger. All of a sudden, on like turn four, you can just have a huge horde of rats attacking, and at that point, barring a sweeper or something, it's really hard for the opponent to get out from under the Pack Rat. So it kind of depends on the situation, but some games we just kind of go all in on Pack Rat. Otherwise, it's just a fine on curve two drop. Abbot of Carol Keep is pretty flexible. We can play it on turn two just as a two one, like Monastery Swift Spear has prowess, so blocking it can be risky. We can also wait until turn three, turn four, depending on our hand, and maybe get another card along with it with its Enter the Battlefield trigger. Uh, so it gives us a lot of flexibility. It's great off the top in the late game because of that extra card, and that's maybe the best thing about our two drops is they're fine on turn two, but they're also great on like turn five. We can play Pack Rat, immediately make a token. We can play Abbot, exile something, and immediately immediately play the card we exile. So our two drops are very flexible, which gives our deck a lot of game. Like, they're great when we're beating down and going aggro, and they're also great when things kind of go a little bit wrong or stuff dies and the game goes long. So having that flexibility really makes our two drops powerful. In the three drop slot, we got two different options. So Countryside Crusher is kind of a weird one, but the basic idea here is if we have a Countryside Crusher out, we never have to worry about drawing lands. And our deck pretty much tops out at three. We do have one four drop that we'll talk about in a minute, but once we get a Countryside Crusher down, we don't really want to draw more lands. So it sits on the battlefield, it grows as it mills lands, and it makes sure that every single turn we are drawing a spell and not a land. So it's a really powerful effect for an aggro deck because one of the ways you lose with an aggro deck is by just flooding out. You draw a string of two or three or four lands in a row and unlike a control deck where you got card draw and filtering to kind of work through those pockets of lands, in an aggro deck that can just ruin your whole game. So Countryside Crusher kind of makes sure that doesn't happen. Goblin Rabble Master on the other hand is just super aggressive. Being Rakdos, we get really good removal that we'll talk about in a minute. So we can get some free wins by just playing a Rabble Master 
here. Uh, we start making tokens, use our removal to clear blockers out of the way, and in those scenarios, Rabble Master is just a super quick clock and can kill the opponent in like three turns by making tokens and just kind of beating down itself. So it's more aggressive of our three drops, so it gives us a nice mixture. Countryside Crusher helps us keep drawing action. Rabble Master is just the easiest way we can steal a win really quickly. As far as our four drop, super powerful. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. So we get four flying haste damage and we have Goblin Rabble Master tokens. We have Pack Rat tokens. We have a few humans like Abbott and Monastery Swift Spear. So we have a lot of good sacrifice fodder. Uh, so Falcon Wrath Aristocrat is just kind of the finisher. We get in our early damage with our one drops, our two drops, and then Aristocrat swings in and just takes over the game is really hard to deal with. Pretty much the only cards that get it is Dismember and Path to Exile. And while those cards are popular, it does dodge a lot of removal. And we can do some tricky stuff where we attack with a bunch of stuff. Whatever our opponent blocks, we can sack to Aristocrat to maybe get a counter on it if it's a human. So there's some cool plays to get in a bunch of damage. So that's kind of the top end of our curve. The real reason to play Rakdos is we get the best removal. As good as it gets, the absolute cream of the crop. And it's actually pretty affordable so we need to play great removal on a budget price so terminate is just the most efficient non-conditional removal spell in all of modern kill any creature no questions asked instant speed can't be regenerated for two mana so that's just as good as it gets it's like a doom blade but without any restrictions so it's one of the big reasons to be in black and red dread boar is just an additional terminate not as good because it's sorcery speed however if our opponent happens to get a Karn liberated down a liliana nahiri it's nice to have some sort of main deck out to just deal with the Planeswalker. Lightning Bolt and Fork Bolt give us a way to clear out early game blockers, keep getting in our Swift Spear damage, trigger prowess on our Abbot, force through our Goblin Rabble Master. Plus, in the late game, they just go to our opponent's face. So if we can get our opponent down to uh, maybe six life, we can kind of finish them off, even if our creatures are dealt with, with an Anger of the Gods or whatever. And that's also a benefit of our haste creatures, a Goblin Rabble Master, especially Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, Monastery Swift Spear to some extent. We have a lot of creatures that come in with haste so we can get a lot of surprise kills where our opponent feels like they're stable they feel like they've kind of dealt with their stuff and then out of nowhere with a combination of lightning bolts and fork bolts but also falcon wrath the risk crates and other haste creatures we just kill our opponent out of the blue and then it says for Actos, we had to play one of the sweetest cards that just doesn't see that much play in modern and that is blightning so blightning is a mind rot target player discards two cards and how good that is really depends on the matchup sometimes if you're playing Affinity, they're going to get empty-handed so quickly, Blightning's probably not relevant. Against more mid-range and control decks, though, it can be very solid. However, Blightning is a big upside of dealing 3 damage, so even in matchups where discarding 2 isn't that great, it is always an overcosted Lava Spike, which is still fine. It gives us another one of those Reach spells to take advantage of all of our early damage, triggers all our prowess, and force through that last bit of damage to close out the game. As far as our mana base, pretty straightforward. We get eight budget duels in Dragon's Hell Summit, Sulphur Springs, and then a bunch of basic lands. And then in the sideboard, Duress and Outpost Siege, mostly for more controlling matchups. Duress also comes in against combo to get rid of scape shifts and ad nauseums and stuff like that, but also very good against control decks, getting rid of cryptics, counter spells, removal, sweepers. Outpost Siege just sits out and generates card advantage, so it gives us a way to fight through decks with really heavy removal by just constantly drawing an extra card every single turn. So it makes sure we always have action and can kind of rebuild after a supreme verdict, after an anger of the gods. So it's really key in those removal heavy mid-range control type matchups. And then we have gut shot mostly for aggro decks. In fact, Affinity kills a surprising amount of stuff, gives us a free prowess trigger, Vandal Blast to fight against any artifact decks, but primarily Affinity, and then Stone Rain for Tron. Uh, these cards are also important right now, I think, because if you listen to what most people have been saying based on the Gitaxian Pro banning, the Golgari Grave Troll banning, that two of the biggest winners are probably Affinity and Tron. So I wanted to make sure I had enough answers in our sideboard to fight against those decks if they do get a bit of a bump from people picking them up now that we've had the Gitaxian Pro banning. 
So that is Rakdos Agro for Modern, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. And I have to say, I had a ton of fun playing this deck. It's just, it's a really fun deck. It is aggressive, but it has a lot of sneaky card advantage. We don't get just drawing card card advantage, uh, except for the Alpo Siege and the sideboard. But we do a better job of kind of sticking around when things go wrong, thanks to our sneaky card advantage like Pack Rat. Pack Rat, we can always discard a useless land to get another rat. Countryside make sure we don't draw useless lands and then we just have a lot of ways to steal the game so if we can get in maybe 10 damage with our swift spears and our abbots over the first few turns it's very possible that something like falcon wrath or scrap lightning bolt lightning like that combination of spells can kill our opponent all the way from 10 so it's really easy for us to just kind of steal games out of nowhere so we get to play a lot of really powerful cards like falcon wrath or scrap is very strong goblin rabble master is just a a really good magic card, Pack Rat, Swift Spear. So even though we're a budget deck, we're a budget deck that manages to play just a lot of really powerful stuff, and we can really outrun and outrace a lot of the decks in modern. Also, Blightning is just awesome. Like, Blightning is such a sweet card to play. Three damage and discard two. For some reason, it just feels so good when you're hitting an opponent with it. Can redirect to Planeswalkers, just does so much stuff, and Pack Rat is awesome, Goblin Rabble Master is awesome, we just get a ton of really sweet cards. So this is like Rakdos Aggro, cards that I enjoy playing, and I think the combination of these cards is actually pretty powerful. I had some decent success with it, so anyway, that's been our deck tag for Rakdos Aggro. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon.